now we'll take a look at the difference between gas power plants and uh, steam power plants. Up to now we've seen uh, how coal or nuclear power plants are working, so they uh, use the heat to boil the water uh, to generate hot steam and hot steam drives a turbine to generate electricity. Um, a gas power plant works in a different way, so there's no steam generated in the uh, gas turbine or gas power plant. Uh, the exhaust gases are generated by combustion processes and they fed directly uh, to, the, to the turbine plates, so they drive the turbine and the generator. Now, one big advantage is that gas turbines can produce at full power within seconds, so you just need to add the, the, the natural gas, um, you burn the gas, uh, so they the, the gas turbines can be uh, available at the grid within seconds or a minute. And uh, the, the concept is rather simple. So you just need the gas turbine, a compressor and some auxiliary facilities. Uh, so a gas power plant is not that complicated uh, compared to a steam power plant where you have a boiler um, and um, the, the water or steam circle uh, the machine house with the generator, etc. The basic design of a gas turbine power plant is shown in this figure. Uh, we start on the left hand side with uh, the inlet of fresh air. So let's make a sketch of our turbine. So we have here this is our turbine. Um, we have here in the, on the left hand side that's the, the inlet. We have here that's the shaft of our turbine with here um, so that's the shaft with here uh, the first part of uh, the uh, gas turbine um, with the compressor so the fresh air with this is the fresh air it's going into our turbine into the cold shed section uh, of our uh, turbine First, we compress the air by uh, reducing its, its volume, increasing uh, the speed. Um, and then um, with compressed air at a pressure of, uh, let's say, 15 to 20 bars. Then we are within the combustion chamber. So here we have the combustion chamber. Combustion chamber. And now we add the natural gas. So here's the gas. So we have a mixture of uh, gas and uh, the fresh uh, air. Then we, we, we burn the gas air mix uh, in the combustion chamber. We increase uh, the energy content uh, by this uh, combustion. So here we have uh, the exhaust gas at a temperature of about uh, 1000 200 degrees, so that's a temperature of 1200 degrees Celsius uh, here at this point. And then we have uh, the part of the turbine, so we have on the one hand uh, uh, the shafts of the turbine, and now the gas runs through this turbine uh, part, um, drives or spins the turbine, and we can use this. Uh, spinning of the turbine to generate electricity. You can see this here on the right hand side. And finally we have the exhaust of the gas with a temperature of about uh, still 600 degrees Celsius. So that's uh, the concept of the design of gas uh, power plant uh, with the first the compressor and the compression of the fresh air, then the combustion chamber uh, where heat is added uh, to the gas and air mix we have a uh, high uh, the gas with high energy or heat um, and use this energy to drive the turbine to spin the turbine to drive the generator and then finally uh, we exhaust the gas at a very high temperature of course what you can also do is you, you can also use uh, fuel instead of a natural gas in the combustion chamber uh, that's also uh, possible, uh, but mainly uh, these uh, type of power plants use natural gas uh, as the fuel 
uh, to drive the process. If you take a look at the thermodynamical circle uh, describing the process in a gas power plant, um, the circle is called the Brayton or the Joule circle. So on the lower left hand side you see the PV diagram with the four steps, so starting uh, at uh, the point number one. So uh, we're here for fresh air, then we have the compression of uh, of the fresh air in the compressor, so that's an isentropic process. This process is, is, is very fast, so there's no heat exchange uh, with, the, with the environment. So uh, isentropic means uh, that the delta Q is zero. We don't have any exchange uh, with the environment, any heat exchange, as this process is very fast. Then second, we are uh, in our combustion chamber. So here we have the combustion combustion chamber. So we um, add the, the natural gas, we have the, the air on a higher pressure, as you can see on the left hand side, we've increased the pressure. So now uh, within the combustion chamber uh, we add heat in an isobaric process, so at a constant pressure. Um, and then finally we have um, this uh, burnt gas uh, air mix which can then run through the turbine, so as a barrack P is constant. Uh, and then, all, as always in these processes, um, go running through the turbine, this is again isentropic uh, expansion in the turbine, so uh, still very fast process, uh, which gives us, uh, again, the Q is nearly zero, of course, it's not a perfect isentropic process, uh, but the nearly isentropic. Uh, so here we run through the turbine and then we can spin the turbine, spin the generator to get electricity and then finally we have the exhaust uh, here in the final part uh, and of course then we need to close the thermodynamical circle here at this point and number four of course this, uh, this is the termination of this process. We have just the exhaust of the hot gas of hot gas um, but uh, in order to, to describe the whole thermodynamical process we need to close the circle and this closing of course is again at, uh, is an isobaric process because here at the exhaust we have a pressure of let's say one bar so atmospheric pressure and the, the air we use in our process is, is always at a pressure of one bar so that's here one bar, so atmospheric pressure, and here we are at, let's say, 50 to 20 bars. So um, this, that's the, uh, the, the, the level of the, of the pressure, and of course this isentropic uh, process here uh, in the turbine, uh, that's expansion of, uh, of the volume, as well as in the combustion chamber, so on, uh, high pressure level we add energy by increasing the temperature, increasing the volume and store the energy in this increase of volume and temperature and then we can use this energy in the turbine and finally we need to get back on a lower uh, pressure level to close our Brayton or Joule circle. The gas turbine produces extremely high combustion temperatures um, which have to be handled by the materials. So let's just draw a sketch of our uh, turbine. So we have the inlet, we have the shaft, and on the left hand side we have the compression of the gas, or the, the, the air, so that's the fresh air, and the inlet, so that, that's the compressor. Then we add the gas in the combustion chamber, so here we have the gas in the combustion chamber, that's this part, and then we have the turbine uh, part which generates the, well, can drive uh, the, the generator, and then finally we have the exhaust on the right hand side. So the air runs through the compressor part, um, and what we have is after the combustion chambers, comb 
combustion chamber is uh, a gas air mix on a high temperature level and let's say 1000 up to 1200 degrees celsius so the material has to be able to handle the these uh, temperature level um, the pressure is not that problem with a pressure of 15 to 20 bar that is not a problem but the high uh, high temperature might be a problem so you need high quality materials uh, which must be able to withstand these process uh, conditions then second the rotation of the turbine by the uh, the air and the gas mix at this high temperature this drives the turbine, uh, spins the turbine, and the spinning of the turbine also uh, runs the compressor so that uh, by this uh, spinning uh, the air is compressed in the first part. So we increase the pressure to 15 or even 20 bar. Um, and this consumes about two thirds of the energy which is uh, produced in a, or used in a gas turbine. And finally, one advantage of a gas fired power plant is that there is no cooling equipment uh, necessary uh, because you can uh, just uh, exhaust the gas to the environment. So here the temperature level is about 600 degrees Celsius. So you do not need to cool down the exhausted gas. Uh, that's a big difference compared to steam power plants because uh, in a steam power plant you have to close the water steam circle. Uh, are right after the turbine you need to uh, cool down the hot steam by using a heat exchanger uh, use a river to cool down the steam that you get uh, liquid water which can be pumped back uh, to the boiler and um, that we can restart the thermodynamical circle now, this is not necessary in the gas power plants and finally um, there is no uh, gas cleaning necessary as the exhaust is rather clean uh, that's again the difference to steam power plants because you have to handle the exhaust of a, of a coal power plant in particular with care uh, due to a harmful uh, particles and molecules in the exhaust uh, of a coal power plant. Let's compare the advantages and disadvantages of a gas-fired power plant. Uh, so what are the, the disadvantages? Uh, on the one hand um, the efficiency of a gas power plant is slightly lower and with efficiency just about 22% without any preheating of, of the air. Um, of course, uh, with the preheating uh, of the, the air used in this um, in the gas power plant and combustion temperatures of let's say 1250 degrees Celsius, we're, we can reach an efficiency about 40%, which is on the same level like a modern steam power plant, or so coal or a uh, nuclear power plant. And of course, this preheating of, uh, of the air uh, makes the system more expensive, uh, so uh, that's inefficient from an economic point of view. Um, and uh, yeah, so you have to, to decide uh, what is the best way uh, not only from the technical point of view but also from the from the economic point of view to operate a gas fired power plant on the other hand we have the advantages compared to uh, steam power plants so uh, the installation uh, is rather fast so the, the, the system is not that complicated um, so you can install gas uh, power plants faster um, we have an uh, system or the gas power plants can be operated more economically um, with a comparable normal output of, uh, of the steam power plants uh, but typically uh, the gas power plants are mainly used um, for the peak load range so uh, the advantage is that gas turbines can produce electricity within a very short time scale so on a second or even minute base they can run on full power, that's the difference to steam power plants. These systems uh, need um, at least minutes or even hours to, to increase their, um, their output, their power. Um, even if they are nearly shut down, it, it takes hours to, to get energy from a coal power plant. Um, that's a advantage of a gas turbine, but on the other side, that means that the, the full load hours of a gas turbine 
is not that large and that reduces the economic efficiency of a gas uh, power plant um, as the, the, the full oil hours is significantly smaller uh, compared to, to steam power plants like a nuclear power plant with the full hours of let's say six or even seven thousand hours a year or a coal power plant with three to five thousand hours uh, a year and typically gas power plant just has a full hours of let's say two thousand to uh, one, even 1,000 full on hours and that of course makes the system more expensive um, as these uh, gas power plants are used to fulfill the peak load and not uh, the base load for example. The global natural gas consumption from uh, 1965 to 2018 has increased significantly. You can see here on, based on the data of the publication statistical review of world energy of uh, BP that uh, the natural gas consumption in petawatt hours has increased from uh, about 6 petawatt hours in the year two, uh, 1965 up to nearly 40 petawatt hours um, in the year 2018. Uh, and you see in all regions of the world the gas consumption has increased um, in green uh, Europe has increased its consumption in North America in dark blue is on a more or less constant level you see Asia and in particular China has increased its consumption um, and that's the reason why the global total consumption has increased. Of course, the natural gas is not only used in gas power plants, gas is also used uh, uh, in, in industrial processes um, to generate a process heat. Uh, and of course, the natural gas is used to heat up uh, rooms so that we get uh, uh, room heat and uh, hot water in the residential sector. And all these um, uh, sections uh, increase the natural uh, gas consumption um, as natural gas is a cheap fossil energy source uh, easy to, to, to get um, easy to transport and easy to use um, so and these are the reasons why the global natural gas consumption has increased in the past and of course will increase in the, in the short and mid-term future as well